kind of the only way that you're going to be a farmer today is if you win the genetic lottery. If you're not born into it, I'm a family farmer in Monroe and Shelby Counties, Missouri. I farm with my father and my son, and we run cattle and grow corn, beans, and wheat. It's just uh, enjoyable to be able to farm with your son and your dad. Some days it's stressful, uh, like today, harvest, so, but it's really enjoyable. I served in the uh, Missouri House from 2000 to 2006 and 2006 to 2010 in the Missouri Senate. If people really study the history of the state of Missouri and study the history of me, I fought for local control my whole tenure in the legislature. Things can turn on a dime in agriculture and so uh, I'm, I'm elated with some of the executive orders that President Biden has done. It gave me hope that first time in my life, in my life, a president of either uh, party showed some guts, showed some real guts in bucking the corporate system. Ownership matters. These companies come in, uh, two or three are all that write the contracts now, basically. The farmer takes all the risks. They extract wealth out of our communities that should be staying here. We see the likes of Smithfield food being bought out by the Chinese. 65% of the pigs raised in my home state of Missouri are foreign owned. You know, today so much of what we hear about to me is not about what affects our lives every day and personal things. It's, uh, you know, a lot of it's just chatter to me. And I think people get turned off by chatter. And I think that's why some of the messaging uh, that Trump said got through to people. It was a populist message. Now, I can tell you the policies that he said, he absolutely did the opposite as far as regard to agriculture um, and to the things that uh, made a difference on my farm. I'll give you two or, th uh, two or three examples. One was the product of the USA label. The Trump administration allowed foreign beef to come in, uh, already packaged, they unpackaged it, repackaged it in a USDA plant and ran a product of the USA label. President Biden has changed that where it has to be born, bred, and processed in the USA to acquire that label. I think that helps protect us and keep JBS from bringing a bunch of inferior beef product in and, and uh, throwing that to our people. President Trump said he's going to help ethanol. Well, he granted, I think, 39 exemptions from big oil companies not having to use our ethanol. President Biden's got that down to two. I'm very hopeful that the Biden administration will put $550 million uh, into promoting competition in the packing industry. I think this will go a long ways towards local entities. Uh, I think it, it'll help bring consumers closer to their food again. That's another executive order that President Biden has issued, right to repair. Farmers don't have the ability to work on their own equipment. Like my granddad, I can recall him back in the day, so I, I ain't never bought nothing that wasn't mine. You know, it's your soil and your toil. Those things that you use your hard-earned money to buy when they sell it ought to be yours. Those kind of initiatives are the things that we're going to have to invest in. And certainly we need to go back to Packers and Stockyards and we need to go to those things that ensure the competition uh, and have these investigations that we've been talking about, uh, that Congress is going to look into them. Every choice we make makes a difference. And if you go into a store, uh, educate, the consumer should educate themselves to see who owns it. You know, there's there's opportunities to buy beef or pork produced by local farmers who do it right. The truth is that, that kind of food is better for people, it's better for a community, um, and, it's, and it's just all around better for this country. It's food security. <laughs>